In this video, we're going to talk about how to estimate bad debt expense by using the percentage of sales approach. And it's also known as the income statement approach. It's actually a very easy and simple way of calculating bad debt. So let's take an example here. Let's say that you run a clothing store. You have a, a small clothing store and you sell uh, on credit. You're very generous and you tell people that that they can uh, purchase purchase things on credit. They don't have to pay cash and you'll just have a tab with them. And historically, historically about 3% don't pay. So when you extend credit to somebody uh, at 3% of the time, they don't actually pay you, they go bankrupt or, or something happens. So if we're gonna use uh, the percentage of sales approach, uh, to estimate bad debt expense for, for your company, uh, we know, need to know a few things. First, we need to know the amount of credit sales. Credit sales. So let's say that for this, this year, you have credit sales of $100,000. Now, why are we just saying credit sales? Why not sales in general? Well, because if someone pays cash, then we don't need to estimate any bad debt, right? We're just trying to come up with an estimate of the people that you extend credit to uh, how many of them won't pay? So we have credit sales, which are people who do not pay cash, the non-cash sales, is 100,000. And we know historically that 3% don't pay. So what are we gonna do? Well, we're just simply gonna take that 3% and multiply it by 100,000. So we have 100,000, we multiply that by 3%, and that's just gonna give us 3,000. And that's going to be our bad debt expense for this year. So now let's let's take a look at the journal entry. So we're going to debit we're going to debit bad debt expense. And since it's an expense, it's going to go to the income statement and reduce net income. So bad debt expense for 3000 Again, it's just based on our percentage of sales, based on historically 3% don't pay, so we're gonna estimate the 3% of this 100,000 will not be collected. So bad debt expense of 3,000, and then what are we gonna credit? Well, we're gonna credit this account called allowance for doubtful accounts. Allowance for doubtful accounts. And this is a contra account uh, that's actually going to reduce, it's going to be a credit. Let me just finish that first. It's going, well, let's just pretend we can look at our balance sheet here and I'll show you exactly what it's going to do. So, so we've got our balance sheet and then we're going to have accounts receivable is going to be a hundred thousand, right? Because we've got a hundred thousand in credit sales. But now we have this allowance for doubtful accounts of, of three thousand. And so that's that's actually going to be a negative amount. That's going to reduce our receivables. I'll just call that ADA, Allowance for Doubtful Accounts. And then that's going to yield our net accounts receivable. I'll just put net here. But a lot of times on a, 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 you might be looking at a balance sheet and it doesn't say net. Uh, not because it's not net. It's because they've already factored in the doubtful accounts. And so they're just presenting it. Uh, as accounts receivable, they've they've already taken out the doubtful accounts. But in this case, to make it very easy for you to understand, we start with our accounts receivable, we subtract out our allowance for doubtful accounts, and then that gives us our net accounts receivable of, of 97,000. Now just in case you're wondering, uh, so you say, okay, well look, we estimate that this is what the amount of people that won't pay or the amount of sales that won't be collected, but what if, or, or, or excuse me, uh, what do we do when someone in fact does not uh, pay, their, pay their bill? Because this is just an allowance, right? This is our estimate. But what happens, what's a journal entry when someone actually doesn't pay? So what we do, and I'll just show you here briefly, if someone actually doesn't pay, so let's say um, $50 actually, uh, or, or, or uncollectible we'll call it actually uncollectible. so one of your customers they owe you fifty dollars and they go bankrupt they go bankrupt and now you need to make the journal entry so what are you what are you gonna do uh, so you you would actually de uh, debit 
this allowance for doubtful accounts, right? Because now you're basically, you had estimated before there's a certain amount won't be paid, but now the estimation for part of it for $50 is over. So you're actually gonna debit this allowance for doubtful accounts for $50, which is reducing it. And then you're gonna credit accounts receivable for $50. And the reason is, remember, accounts receivable is an asset, so it's going to go down with the credit. So basically, when someone actually, in fact, does not pay you, and it's like, okay, the estimation part of this is over, it's actually uncollectible, so we can say, okay, well, let's reduce our, our allowance account, uh, and then we're going to go ahead and, and credit and reduce our account receivable directly.